Hi everyone. In this screencast, I'm going to show you one of my favourite features in Storyline, and it's a bit of a hidden feature as well, and it's called Button Sets. And they're really handy things to use if you're, say, creating a tabs interaction or a process interaction where you might only want to have uh, one part of the tab or the button or the process selected at any one time. So I'm going to show you, um, uh, I guess, a before and an after of button sets and also show you some different situations where you might uh, apply uh, button sets to. So what I've got here at the moment is I've got a button on the slide and if I select it and go to the states area you can see I've got a number of states uh, for this particular button. Now um, I intend to insert a few more buttons on here and, and um, if, the inter if I was going to build the interaction I might you know, click on a button to, to show a layer you know, again as steps of a process or, or as some tabs. So by default there isn't, an, there isn't actually a, a selected state of the button so what I'm going to do first because I know I'm going to put some more buttons on there and I'm going to create a new state for this button. So I'm going to click on the edit states button and I'm going to add a new state and I'm going to create a selected state for my button. I'm going to add that in. Now the, by default the, the selected state looks like the, the normal state and in fact most of the other states it's very similar. So what I might like to do at this point is make that selected state look really different. So I'm going to go up to the format tab at the top and for this one I'm just going to make it look red. So whenever the button is selected it'll change to a red color and then I'm going to say done editing states. So I have one state that looks different to the rest. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy uh, of that button. Make another couple, two, three, four buttons. Okay. And because I've copied them, uh, it's going to copy the state as well. So these additional buttons all have uh, that selected state in, in the red color. So. I know that they're all going to behave the same way. Now, when I go to preview this out, uh, what actually will happen? I can test that if that's working. So if I click on my first button, it changes red, which is what I want to happen. But if I go to click on the second one, it changes red, which is what I want to happen, but the other button still stays selected. And the same thing happens for my other two buttons as well. And in fact, if I click them again, they go back to the normal state. Now, if this was an interaction, I'd probably have click on a button and show some info, click on a, another button, maybe show some more info, but to show that that button belongs with that information, I only want that particular button to be in the selected state at any one time. So what I could do is I could go in and I could add a whole lot of triggers to change the state of the button from selected to normal when another one's selected and go through all of that process. But a simple and easier way to do that is to create a button set with these buttons. And the beauty of the button set is when you put objects into a button set, only one object from the set can be selected at any one time. And they're really easy to create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of my buttons they, I want them all in the button set. Then I'm going to right click and there's a button set option. And I'm going to create a new set. And this one I'm just going to call buttons. And add it in. Now to look at it, nothing much changes. There's nothing visible that I can see that there are buttons set. But if I preview out the slide now, what will happen, I can select one button and show my other content. I can select another one, show that content and the original button that I just selected goes back to normal. So only one button at a time can be in the selected state, which is really handy. Now they are called button sets and, and, and for use with buttons. However, you can use them with shapes as well. So here's, say, four tabs that I've created. And each of the tabs I've created, because it's just a shape, all, all I had was the normal state, I've just created a selected state for my tabs and duplicated the tab. So this time, if I, again, select all of my tabs and I create a button, a new set, this time I'll call it the tabs set and add that to my project. When I preview out the slide now, I can only click one tab at a time and it'll only allow one to be selected. I can also, if I really wanted to, if I was say going to have a choose your own character at the start of a course, I can put these characters into a button set. So again, insert them in, button set, 
new set and I might call this one people and add that to my project so again if I preview it out what I'll have is I can only choose one person at a time now what happens when you create a button set with uh, objects uh, shapes or people or you can do it with images as well the default selected state you get is this glow around the edge that might be okay you might be happy with that but if I say for my lady if I want to um, uh, change that so perhaps I could I can uh, edit the states choose my selected state as the one I want to edit and then I might decide to um, you know I could have a different colored glow if I wanted to or make the selected state look different altogether and then apply that selected state to my other people or other objects as well so there you go that's button sets a great way to, to group objects together to make only one of them clickable at any one time. Great for tab interactions, process interactions, or anything where you only want to, the user to be able to select one object at a time. That's it for me. See you next time.